Okay, so this is a video for P6, and this is uh, Oracle P6 Project Management uh, version 21. And um, I want to show you a little bit on uh, just some details. Um, I just want to clear up clear up a few things as far as uh, the software goes, and just some uh, easier things to um, to do here when you're uh, when you're using Oracle. Uh, for starters. We have made a, uh, a scheduling enterprise. I think I did that in one of my last videos on how to actually create the enterprise. So if you go to enterprise and then enterprise project structure from the, uh, the top pull down menu, um, you will see, and I always like to minimize this stuff because I don't really need it. Um, you'll see where we added a, a scheduling, uh, sort of a scheduling heading so we can stick all of one particular work in there. So any kind of, you know, new schedules we'll be putting under here just so we can identify and, and know where it's at. So there's uh, scheduling. And now what I want to do is create a new uh, folder under scheduling. So if I, if I have, you know, scheduling highlighted here, I come over to the right um, to the top right in the menu. You'll see a red X and then you'll see a plus sign. Uh, if you mouse over it, it says add. So we're going to click and add. And you'll notice underneath scheduling now it says new project. Okay, so the first thing that pops up is this uh, EPS dialog box that says create a new project. And we want to keep that same EPS under scheduling. Okay, I don't want to change it. Now, for some reason, if you had manufacturing or energy or something like that, you could click on uh, the little double arrows here and select where you want that to go. Okay, but in my case, it just popped up scheduling because... I had scheduling highlighted. All right, so now I'm going to hit next. And now we have a project ID, and I'm going to uh, change this um, to, I'm just going to say week eight um, dash one. Okay, and then a project name, I'm going to change that, and I'm just going to say, um, I don't know, uh, we'll just call it house. Okay, and then I'm going to hit finish. And you'll notice that it changed that over here. Okay, so now. If I want to go to that project, I simply right click on week 8-1 and say open project. Okay, so if I right click open project, you'll notice now I have up at the top, there's a projects tab, which I was just there. And now there's an activities tab. Okay, so the activities tab now says week 8-1 and house. So I can come over here and add some activities. Um, and I'm just going to call this uh, SOG for slab on grade. Um, hit finish. I'm going to add another one. This is, uh, I'm just keeping the activity IDs as default. It's just the easiest thing to do. This is A1010. Um, this one will be, um, let's just say framing. I'm just going to do some very easy basic stuff here. Um, I'm going to add another one. Um, and this activity name will be, um, we'll just say rough ends. How about that? rough ends, um, hit finish, add another one. Um, this one I'm going to call finish trim. And I will add another one. And we'll just call this uh, paint. Just trying to throw some items out there. And then uh, one more, we'll just call this one punch or punch list maybe. How's that? And then finish. Okay, so now what I want to do, I'm actually going to change the duration in these. So the uh, paint, let's say, is going to be three days. Um, finish trim, we'll just do four on that one. Rough ends, maybe I'll say seven. Um, framing, I might put that at 10. Um, slab on grade, which will um, include um, grading. Um, prepping for the slab and then actual pouring the slab. I'll just do four days there. Okay. So now I have these activities. Uh, I do not have to do a project management or a hammock activity because that's what that black line represents going across the top. And right now you'll notice um, you can slide, uh, if you're familiar with Excel, you can slide this line here, kind of like you're widening up a row. Um, and get it uh, to, you know, you can come in where it covers everything, or if you want to see everything, you come out. Now, I'm recording this on a wide screen, so it may not be as much as yours, so you may want to 
um, you know, compress some of these activities, again, similar to Excel. Okay, so now I've got original duration, remaining duration, and then now over here I've got a start and a finish. So uh, right now it's going to take me 14 days to do this, but I have no activities. Okay, so I'm going to stretch this all out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mouse over, and you'll see the black arrow uh, show up, the little crooked arrow. I'm going to click left click and hold it down so you keep pressing it down and move and as you're pressing it down you can see it's attached to my mouse i'm going to come up here and click on the end of framing i'm going to do the same thing with the end of framing click that over and click on rough ends okay now i'm going to go up to the little clock up at the top and i'm going to click on schedule and you'll see it pops these out here just as a uh, a schedule would um now, let's see if I can't, uh, I was trying to get my... All right, so I was, I was looking for the Saturday and Sunday. It's so weird that on the screen I'm actually recording. Um, my vision doesn't show it, but I'm looking on the screen being recorded. And you should see a gray vertical line that goes up and down. That's on the Saturday and the Sunday. Okay, so sort of on the weekend. Right now, the schedule's set up for um, calendar week, uh, calendar work days. So in other words, Monday through Friday. Anything Saturday and Sunday is grayed out, so that's why you see the gray line. So if you have an item like, for instance, punch list, um, it takes five days, but it shows that we're starting on a Tuesday. So that takes you, you know, Tuesday through Friday is four days. Well, I need one more day, which is actually Monday, and you'll notice it goes through the weekend. So if I add all those days up, that's more than five. Um, so anyway, I just want to let you know that it runs through the weekend there. Um, Okay, so now what I want to do is a start to start with finish trim. Okay, but let's say I go finish, which is towards the end. I do a finish to start, and then I hit the schedule, and it puts it out here. I'm like, oh, shoot, I meant to do a start to start. Well, there's a couple different things you can do. Um, if I click on finish trim, I can click on predecessors down at the bottom here. Um, and you'll notice it says rough ends and it's a finish to start relationship. Okay. If I click on that relationship twice, um, now I've got a down arrow where I can select finish to finish, start to start, however you, whichever one you want. And I can click on uh, SS for uh, start to start. And then I can come over here and actually type in the number of uh, days for a lag. Okay. So that's one way of doing it. Now, if you don't have this down here and it doesn't look anything like mine, like general, and you don't see predecessors or successors, just go up to the top here. Um, you have some buttons up at the very top underneath tools and admin. The first one says details. Next one is activity, usage, spreadsheet. It goes on down through here. So if you, know, you have one of these other weird looking views, just make sure... Um, that it's on the details, okay? So up here, the details is that first one, and the details will show the um, predecessors and successors. So if I want to change that, like I said, I click on finish trim, I can go to predecessors. Predecessors means pre, before. Or uh, I can mouse over, and you'll see where there's a solid white line now on my screen, where if I move just a little bit, I'll have the the black line where I do my relationships. But if you move and you have this solid white up arrow, I click on that and, um, ah, there we go. Uh, when you click on it, I think sometimes you got to double click. It'll open up and it'll say edit relationship. So it's a finish rough ends before starting finish trim. Well, I want to change that relationship to a start to start with a, let's just say a three day lag and I hit okay. Well, now you notice it shifted that, arrow from the back of rough ends to the front of rough ends but you'll notice it didn't change anything well i gotta go up and hit my little clock and reschedule everything and now you'll notice it bumped it over so they both are starting at the same time but there's a uh, what i say four day lag on that three day um then um rough ends i'm going to bring that to paint and i'm going to bring finish trim to paint and then i'm going to bring paint to punch list and click on the schedule and schedule that out. And now you can see every activity is a critical activity. Um, now, if I was to change this finish trim here to, let's just say, a 
two day lag and hit OK. Um, it will probably change that to green for me. And the reason being, the finished trim gets done before the rough ends do. So it's not critical. I still have a couple of float days here, actually one float day. So that's why it turned that to green, okay, because it's it's a float. The difference between the end of rough ends and the end of finished trim is one day. But regardless, at the end of rough ends, that's when I start the paint. It's just my finished trim should get done a day ahead of that. So it's not a critical path or a critical activity anymore because of that, okay. So that's kind of how to change some activities. Now, if I want to go back to projects, and remember I started, or I didn't start, um, let's just say I want to create a new um, folder here because I have another project to do. Again, I'm going to keep it underneath scheduling EPS. And now let's just say week 8-2, because it's my second assignment. <clears throat> and now project name, um, I might call this mod 8-9 or something like that. So now it'll pull that up. So now I've got week eight, which clearly shows that. And then like next week, I can say week nine dash one, week nine dash two, so on and so forth, and then change to what that schedule actually is. So I can see eight dash two. I'm going to right click on it and say open project. And it will open up, <coughs> excuse me, this project. And now I can immediately come up here and start adding in um, my activities. And I'm not going to get crazy and actually name these. I'm just going to put a few up here. Um, I'm going to put five up there. Um, and then I can just, for kicks, I'll just do a regular schedule here. Like that. And hit the schedule button. Boom. Okay, so they're out there. Um, if you come up here to the very top and click on that little green thing there, it says relationship lines it will actually take away the relationship lines. So there's that little tidbit, but most time you want to see the, the line on that. But if I go back to the projects now, you'll see I've got two of them there, 8-1 and module 8-9. If I click back to activities, it will take me to the one I was last on or the one that I'm highlighted, so which is this case week 8-2, mod 8-9, okay? so. Again, as long as you're on the details, you can do the predecessor and successors and actually change the relationships, change the lag, you know, that kind of thing. So um, I'm going to take you back to one more thing. Uh, if I'm on the garage, this is one that a, <clears throat> that a student had opened or that is sent to me. And so I'm just going to open it up. And uh, underneath this one, you'll notice there is a project management on here. Some of you guys were kind of tempted to do a project management because... The hand schedule shows that. So uh, on this one, you actually won't need that. So I can right click on that project schedule, on that project um, management activity. If I right click on it and go down to delete, and then it's going to double check and say, are you sure you want to delete that? And say yes, it will get rid of that for you. Okay, so that's gone. Um, and the hammock activity is already up at the top. So that's what that black line is for. And you'll notice like original duration, remaining duration, it will give me a day uh, of 41 days. Um, now, if I do a, um, let me slide this over here just a little bit. If I do a diamond up here, like a start milestone for my notice to proceed, and I do a start to start, because um, if I click on it and say, oh, there's no, there's no predecessor. Okay, I was thinking it would do a, a relationship, but maybe it didn't have one. But I can do a um, finish to start with order deliver brick and then a finish to start with excavation. I'm not sure why it's not showing that. Let me do a schedule and see if that popped it up. It did not. Let me try again. Hmm. A lot of times it'll put that up there, but there again, if it's so small, then it may not. Let's see if I can't. Okay, it still won't. Um, I know some of the other versions would let you actually put a relationship there, but anyway, notice to proceed. Um, it's just a moment in time, but you'll you'll see it didn't affect my day anyway. I'm still at 41. Um, if you're not at a certain day front on your schedule and you did a hand schedule, and I always suggest doing a hand schedule first, 
so you can see the relationships and see the bubbles and how all the each activity comes into that activity. You can go back and use your hand schedule to check your P6 schedule. Okay, so it'll show all that for you. Um, I think that's it. The only other thing is if your activity IDs are out of order, okay, you can come up here and just click on that activity ID and it will reverse order or put it in a reverse order. As you can see, my schedule is kind of backwards now. So I come up here and click on activity ID again and it will order um, all of my activity IDs in numerical order. Okay, some of you may have had a question with that. As you're entering in, activities may have got off a little bit. Well, just click that activity ID and it should put it in order. Um, I think that's it. I just wanted to do a quick little um, you know, demonstration here to show you what's going on. Um, again, creating the folders underneath the scheduling enterprise um, is is probably the best thing to do once you create you know you come over here to the right and create that folder then right click on it and say open project and it will open up that project underneath the activities tab and it'll be just that project okay if I come over here to projects and I say open project of the house and it will open just the house project okay then for exporting you know like if you want to export and upload um, or email to somebody or whatever the case may be um, you just have to come over here and say export and leave it on Primavera kind of default just about everything here um, and that's the one I want to do is week 8 uh, dash 1 in the house project so hit next tell it where you want it to export it I've got mine set to desktop right now but you can you know obviously click on the little arrows here and, and put that anywhere you want and then hit finish and then it will export it successfully. Now for me, uh, I put it in on my desktop, which like I need help there. I've got a whole bunch of stuff there now. So here's garage. Let's go down. Yeah, there it is. So week eight dash one is the one I just did. Okay. So that's there. But anyway, um, I just wanted to clarify a few things. I hope this helped with P6 and uh, hopefully cleared up any kind of confusion out there with it. But I also suggest having a mouse. Um, if you don't have a mouse, it's going to be awful hard to make these relationships. It's just going to be so much easier. So, alrighty. If you have any questions, let me know.